Hey, what's up everybody? So I wanted to make a quick video because I got a message from another student who was asking me about how I implemented the chat system for the last optional challenge in lecture 222. And uh, so I wanted to make this video highlighting how I did it. So the first thing I did was in the widget blueprint for the character overlay, I added an editable text box widget. And this is gonna be uh, where the player inputs the message they want to send so you add the widget you can set its visibility in co under uh, to collapsed it's visibility under behavior to collapsed and make sure that you give it a name because we're going to need the name when we bind it in c plus plus so in the character overlay header uh we can bind the widget by creating a u editable text box pointer and uh make sure you forward declare it don't uh don't include the header here yet i'm not going to talk about any of the headers that are included i'm just going to trust that you know to include the headers where they go so um we can bind this with the u property meta bind widget specifier and once we bind it make sure that you have the same name for the pointer as you do for the uh widget here in the editor just the same way as we did all of the other widgets here once you bind it we can do stuff to it in c plus plus so the first function i created was one to toggle the chat box now this is actually bound to the player input component in the editor it's set to the tab key and i just bind it here to the player input component to an action on the blaster character called use chat box all it does is get a hold of my character overlay and uh, fire my toggle chat box function. Now I put this functionality on the character overlay class. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts on that, I really welcome what they think about that. So uh, moving on, all that the toggle chat box function does is it sets a boolean, uh, which said or it reads a boolean initially which says if the chat box is not visible which it won't be initially this boolean is set to false and uh if it's not visible then we're going to make it visible we're going to set the visibility to visible we're going to set the focus and we're going to set our player controller's input mode to a uh, game and ui meaning we can access it and type in it and if it is already visible and we're pressing the tab key i want it to do the opposite so uh, the only other thing this function does is very, very important, actually. But first, we have to create this function here, which is called text committed. And text committed is going to need a U function specifier because we're going to be binding it. And it also needs these specific parameters, const f text reference text and e text commit type commit method, because we're going to be binding it to uh, a delegate requiring those parameters. The delegate we'll, we'll bind text committed to is going to be called on text committed, which exists in the editable text box class. So it will exist on our chat input text box. So as you can see, the on text committed delegate here is called whenever the text is committed. It happens when the user presses enter or the text box loses focus. And it is a delegate of type f on editable text box committed event, which takes these parameters here, which is why we need our method to have these parameters so that whenever the delegate is fired, we will receive the information uh, contained in these arguments. So our function here is going to be bound whenever the text box is made visible and unbound whenever the text box is made invisible so as soon as the text box is created by pressing the tab key we'll toggle the chat box on we'll bind the on text committed delegate to our function text committed and then it will bring up the text box and let the player start typing so once the player types in their message and hits the enter button now that our function is bound to it it's going to call our text committed function as well as the uh any L any other functions that are bound to it but this is ours so this is the one we're concerned with now we get access to both the text which was contained in the text box at the time the text was committed and the commit method 
The commit method can be more than just uh, pressing the enter button. It can also be losing focus for uh, various reasons. But clearly the one we're concerned with is when they press the enter button because that means they meant to send the message, right? So when they send the message, if the commit method is uh, equal to on enter, we are going to, now the, the bulk of this code is actually just toggling the chat boxes visibility again it's going to do basically the same thing that it does when it toggles the visibility off it's also going to clear the string contained within the chat box so that the player next time they bring it up it's it's clear and it's also going to remove the binding once more since it's making the ch uh, chat box invisible we're going to remove the binding from it and this is just another case of uh, setting the visibility to collapse and removing the binding. It's just if the commit method was not on enter, meaning they, for some other reason, lost focus. I wanted everything to uh, still uh, tog toggle out of the chat box. Now, the other important thing that happens when the enter button is pressed is we call a server RPC and the server RPC exists on our blaster player controller. We're going to need to create this and it is going to take a player state pointer and a string. And the string is actually going to be the message that the player sent passed to us through the text committed function. And the player state is going to be the player state of the character that wants to send the message. So if we go to our, uh, Blaster player controller header, we can see where we have created this server RPC. It's called server broadcast message. It takes a player state called sender, a player state pointer called sender, and a const f string reference called message. And if we look at what this does, what this does is it gets a pointer to the game mode and calls a function on the game mode called broadcast chat message. So when this is called basically from any client that sends a message they're going to send to the server the their player state and the message they want to send the server is then going to with this function find the game mode and call a function on it called broadcast chat message so this is the next function we need broadcast chat message it exists on the game mode and it is also going to have the same input parameters the player state sender and the const f string reference message and when this is called, what happens is this is the place where from the game mode, we can do a safety check for like, what if the message contains something uh, bad or, uh, you know, whatever other reason, maybe they're spamming messages too frequently and we'll have access to both the player state and uh, their string of message they're wanting to send so that we can make any kind of checks that we want to. Now, this is another part. I wasn't sure if this was uh, specifically a good spot for this. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on that if you have any. But now, continuing on, all we do here is from the game mode, we get a player controller iterator and iterate through all the player controllers in the world. And... Uh, for all of them, we're going to call a client RPC, which is just going to pass the sender name in form of an F string and the message in form of an F string as well. So first we get the sender name by get calling sender get player name and the sender was the player state that was passed to us here. I figured we don't need the player state anymore. We can just start sending a F string reference through. So when we do call this client RPC, it's gonna call this from the game mode to every client connected. So we're back on all of the clients and it's gonna pass the sender name and the message. And what it does is it is very similar to our add a limb announcement text. Now, if you remember from the uh, lecture, what, 216 or 217, and we added the a limb announcement text which is basically just gets the hood and and adds uh an elimination announcement depending on who uh eliminated who and our function add chat announcement is going to do exactly the same thing except for a few lines of code maybe just one line of code actually basically uh we create the same type of announcement 
only instead of a limb announcement, I've named it chat announcement. And then to set the text of that announcement, I've added a function on the elim announcement class called set player chat text. And what this is, is a void function that takes a const fstring reference called sender name and a const fstring reference called message to display. And all it does is the same exact thing as set elim announcement text did. It just creates us a formatted string displaying the sender name and the message to display. And it sets the announcement text to be that string. So when this specific uh, announcement widget is initialized, now it does say a limb announcement, and I realize I should probably change this to say announcement in general, just announcement. But I still have a uh, still haven't completely perfected this code quite yet. So, um, where were we? Uh, I apologize. So when this gets called, we create the chat announcement widget. We uh, add it to the viewport, and then it's just added to the same array of announcements as was the elimination announcements that we created. So that way, all of the announcements are going to populate the same screen space, and uh, canvas slots are going to be pushed up in 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 sync with each other, so that they're all going to. Uh, look natural and, and occupy the same screen space. So the rest of the code for the add chat announcement, it's actually exactly the same as the code for add a limb announcement there. So that's the gist of it. I hope I didn't get too complicated or carried away with this. I do apologize for uh, making this video longer than I anticipated, but I wanted to be clear. I'll also post the write-up I was trying to write up originally in the Discord. And if anybody is watching this video who has not taken the course, I'll definitely link the course in the description below. And uh, it's a wonderful course, has awesome explanation of multiplayer concepts. And you can uh, get the, the gist of the rest of this uh, chat implementation uh, for a really great value. So please go check the course out there. Um, everybody else, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Take care.